Hi, I'm Mark McKenna, and this is the Permanent Rain Press. Hi, everyone. It's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press today. I am so happy to be joined by Mark McKenna. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. I know we were just talking. Uh, it's been wild times these past few months. Aside from being in the studio, which we'll talk about a bit later, what have you been up to? Uh, not much, to be honest. Sitting, sitting at home, playing PlayStation and trying to write new music, really. That's about it. That's as exciting as it gets. Yeah. What games have you been playing? Uh, I just finished The Last of Us 2, which is an amazing game. And uh, it, uh, it, it just took over my life for a few days. So now that I've finished that, I have no idea what I'm going to do with my life. <laughs> well, like you mentioned, you've been busy writing. Uh, it's been an exciting time for Milk. One, the EP just came out last month. It's about human attachment, intimacy, reflection. As a songwriter, what did that process look like for you? Um, I, yeah, I, d I don't know, really. There was no, like, uh, I never planned it out. I think I just I just wrote the songs and we picked a track list. And it, it kind of came as a realization after the fact that that was like a running team throughout everything. So it was less of a, I mean, I wish I could say I, I planned that out and it was this whole thing that I did. But it was a, it was very much so a, a realization that came after I wrote all the songs. You have mentioned that, you know, you write off of real life experiences. So that's something like I think art should be more of a like cathartic release. So yourself, Connor G, Connor K. Morgan, you've all been part of other musical projects, but have really focused on Milk this past year. Do you remember the moment? Like, was it at a jam session or something? It just clicked when you were like, I think we have something special here. Uh, I think it was it started off as me and Connor Gorman and uh, we brought Morgan was in another band at the time and I asked him if he'd just come in. We we're just we we're friends with Morgan, so I asked if he would just play drums kind of like as a favor while we got bassists to come in and try. And um yeah, I think Morgan just messaged me one day and he he said he was just very into the music and uh he wanted to stick with us permanently if he could. And I, I was fully up for that. And then Connor King was just kind of known in our college for being the best bassist around. So we got him in and uh I think it was it was there was less of a sitting around and jamming and seeing if it worked and it was more we had already recorded a few songs so we sent them around and we were basically just like learn your parts and then we'll come in and see what happens and we all learned our parts properly so I think straight away it just kind of everything clicked and it all sounded pretty good. Yeah well it's worked out well for you and uh, you're mentioning Connor he's well known at I was looking at his Instagram. He's in quite a few acts. Like, is it like a session musician kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. He 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 was doing a lot of session playing before he joined. Well, he still does session playing, but that was his main thing before he joined Milk. Yeah. Yeah. So you did record the EP at Flick Studios with your friend Adam Redman. What was it like working yeah. with him? Uh, amazing. We're we're currently at Flick today. I'm actually sitting outside the studio right now. But um, uh, yeah, amazing. I just I, I think Adam just has this very very special talent when it comes to production, especially at the age he's at. He, he's gonna go, he's gonna learn a lot more anyway, and he's gonna go very far in production. Um, we we kind of came in with a very ambitious idea and uh, scope for the sound. And uh, we didn't think we were gonna find anyone that could do it or like make it happen. And Adam just did it straight away. And it was, I don't know, it was very, it was a very magical moment. And uh, now we've just kind of stuck with him ever since. We've we've never worked with any other producer, and I, I don't think we will anytime soon. Anyway. So um, working with Adam, it's so great, you know, to work with friends who understand your sound and your vision. Back in the studio, working on new material, what can you share? Uh, back in the studio, it's we're we're trying to um, definitely progress the sound, but not change it too much i i personally think the new stuff is already better than the first tp we're um we're in the early stages at the moment so we're just demoing i think we're going to demo maybe 10 songs and then we're going to pick like six or five of the best and they're going to be on the ep but uh so far what we have at the moment i think is definitely a lot more progressive we've gone around with a new uh kind of 
writing technique this time we've we've kind of decided to go about it in a in a quicker way i suppose that's quicker quicker in terms of work and also more creatively satisfying for all of us rather than just one or two of us but um yeah i think at the moment we're just in a very good spot with our writing and i'm excited to to get the new stuff out because i think it's pretty pretty big to be honest so so you mentioned uh five or six tracks so second ep is what you're kind of working at right yeah yeah i know people have been asking for uh american girls or if they ever see a, mm. a recorded version of one which is the song that you named the ep after that got scrapped so any plans yeah. for those two uh american girls definitely in the future not on the second ep but definitely in the future uh and one i don't i don't really know i think we we went to record it and we just we realized it just wasn't god so maybe we'll just rewrite it or rearrange it one day and release yeah. it then but at the moment i think the stuff we have is a lot stronger than it so I don't know, I think I'd, now, I'd like... about, yeah i'd be worried about disappointing people or something <laughs> So imagery plays a part in Milk's brand. I know you're a photographer. You like documenting the process. So is something like a photo book still in the plans for maybe that second EP? Yeah, we were thinking at some point of doing like, it would probably be like an album thing, but maybe doing like a special, like limited edition that comes with a photo book of some sort. But uh, I, I would like to do it. We haven't, we haven't planned that far ahead yet, but I'd definitely like to do a photo book at some point. So after the release of Drama Queen, you did get to play like a handful of shows. So tell me a bit about the hometown support you've received from Dublin. Yeah, the, I mean, Dublin's music scene is, uh, is amazing when it comes to support. I mean, there's, there's a lot of bands in Dublin and uh, it's a very small city. So we all know who each other are, we're all very aware of each other. Um, and it's just, I think the whole community, like every band in Dublin gets like gets the support that they give to others and uh but you know like playing live is always always going to be fun i i hate the lead up to playing live but i love when i'm actually playing live it's it's a very strange feeling but um yeah i think i mean just the music scene in Dublin is always going to be well i hope it's always going to be as supportive as it is now and if not even somehow maybe get more supportive but uh it's 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 a good feeling to know that there's other people out there who kind of understand and support what you're doing, especially on the on a personal level. And you just signed with a bookings agency close up, so hopefully more live shows to come once it's safe to do so. Yes, now, hopefully. For, for you, what's more nerve wracking, getting up on stage and performing, or you know, being on screen when the cameras are rolling? Uh, probably getting on stage and performing because I don't. There's no like second take or anything like that and i just i just hate i don't like singing in front of people so that's always been a weird issue for me playing live but maybe i'll get over that one day or something yeah but as long as moment, you play more shows maybe you'll get get more used to it you do have a soundcloud account lover boy where you post solo yes. acoustic demos what what kind of music makes it onto there I, I i don't really know to be honest i just kind of record them and if they don't feel like something milk would do i just kind of stick it up on loverboy i don't i never really put too much effort into it really it's 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 usually five to six hours of work type stuff and then maybe maybe some of them in the future will become milk songs so i don't know hopefully so you when you started playing music i know fallout boy was one of your influences i feel like because it's more acoustic there's like a more of an emo punk tone i don't know maybe that's yeah. just me but i think if it turns into a milk song you might have to like pop popify it a little more maybe or, or we could just go for it with a with a pop punk song who knows oh uh, yeah there there have been albums like pop pop goes punk compilations stuff like that yeah, so, yeah 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 so i wanted to talk uh briefly about wayne phenomenal show unfortunately only got one season but mm. looking online you know there's still so many people campaigning for more so what does it mean to you knowing that it still has this level of support uh i i just i just think i mean i definitely found it to be a very special show and i i I love that it was it was understood and received the way it was because I mean doing something like that it's always going to be like you don't know what's going to happen you don't know who's going to see it or who's going to care 
But uh, yeah, I, just, I thought that show was very, very special, very real and human. And I think that was the biggest appeal of it, which is, again, obviously now, since I've had that experience and I've met Sean, it's something I would like to take into writing in the future, but uh, music wise. But um, yeah, I think just the continued support for the show is is amazing. And I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that we got to make something that touched people the way I did. If there was a second season or, you know, before before you heard the news, what would you have liked to explore more from Wayne? Um, probably his development, as a character anyway, definitely his development in, uh, in his emotions because he, he definitely, as a character, doesn't understand them or know how to deal with them or react to them at the moment. So I think it would be a nice, interesting kind of uh, take to watch him develop those emotions in the future and kind of begin to understand how he feels and how to deal with his feelings and how to react to them rather than lashing out and getting into fights all the time. So the, the end of episode 10 was uh, quite dramatic, quite grisly. Have you been keeping in touch with Sierra at all? Yeah, I, I see Sierra and Sean uh, very often. Every, I, I'd, I'd go to LA maybe every two to three months. Obviously not right now with, with coronavirus and everything, but I, I definitely keep in touch with them and see them fairly often. It's nice to see those friendships kind of carry on from the show. Uh, so you did film a pilot in Vancouver last year. One of us is lying. What are some of your memories from your time in the city? Uh, Vancouver is an amazing city. I, 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 I love how close everything was to, uh, to nature and how easy it was to actually leave the city and go into nature. And um, I, I have some friends who are in Vancouver that I got to visit, which is also nice. But uh, yeah, I like I like any city where you can walk anywhere, which is not something you can do in places like LA. So um, also in that pilot, Chase Stokes from Outer Banks, people were noticing he did uh, yes. support Milk's EP when it came out on Instagram. So did you know him before or did you just become fast friends during filming? Yeah, yeah, I met, I met Chase on, uh, on the pilot and we just became, I think, uh, Chase wanted to go down to the bar to get a drink one night and everyone was going to bed and no one would go with him and then I just said I'd go with him even though we had never spoke to each other before this point and we just became very good friends and stayed in touch. You said on a Carson Daily feature that when you were younger you used to eat food off of other families plates at oh, restaurants. Wow. Was yeah. this something that you have vivid memory of or something your parents told you? Uh, no it's it's I, I think I have memories of it. I, I I probably have very mild. No, I have. I'd say I have mildly inaccurate memories. Um, my parents definitely have vivid memories of embarrassment and have told me stories of it and the uh, things I used to say to people when I was a kid. And so I, I was just a bit, I was like a loose cannon when I was a kid. Was it like impulse? Was it jealousy? Do you do you recall? I don't know. I don't know what it was. I I don't know what was wrong with me. I just. <laughs> I just did stupid things and said stupid things. It's a conversation. I would say a conversation starter could equally be a killer. It could go either way. Yeah. It, um, I mean, it definitely makes for good stories when my parents are trying to embarrass me in front of people. <laughs> yeah, old family friends. Oh, do you remember the time when? Stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On the topic of food, we have a signature question for you. If you could be any ice cream flavor, which would you be and why? Um, Probably like, whew, uh, any ice cream flavor. Maybe like Ben and Jerry's fish food with a bit of mint mixed in. Purely because that's my two favorite flavors of ice cream, and I don't, I don't. If there's any personality links, maybe someone else could come up with one, and I'll, I'll steal their answer instead. Solid picks. Uh, that's all I have for you, Mark. Thank you for taking the time to chat. Really appreciate it. Thank you. One, the EP by Milk is out now. Be sure to check it out. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.